psychyogi.org. Pennington and Hasty, 1988. This is the first study we'll be looking at from reaching a verdict and persuading a jury as part of your A2 forensic psychology course. It is further categorised into order effects or story order and witness order. Reaching a verdict and persuading a jury considered the legal system. This study specifically covers court hearings. In the United Kingdom, the final verdict in criminal trials is made by a jury of 12 citizens randomly selected from the voting register, which upon turning 18, all UK citizens are added to. Prisoners and people diagnosed with mental illnesses are not allowed to serve on juries. In the United Kingdom, there are nine stages to court hearings. The indictment, the defendant's plea, the prosecution's opening statement, the defence's opening statement, evidence from the witnesses, prosecution closing statement, the defence's closing statement, the ju- judge's instructions to the jury on procedures and verdicts, and then the jury retire to reach a verdict, out of which 10 out of 12 must agree for the decision to be made. One of the problems with studying the decision-making process of juries is that in the United Kingdom it is illegal to ask juries how they arrived at their decision or to record the process. This means that psychologists must use alternative methods to study the process. There are two main ways in which they will achieve this. Firstly, they will use 12 people to make a shadow jury that watches the real case from the public gallery and then attempts to reach a verdict. This has an added benefit of being high in ecological validity because the people have actually seen the real trial and have been subject to the same conditions nearly as the real jury. Secondly, psychologists can attempt to make a mock trial and then record how the mock jury reaches their decision. Thirdly, they can use recordings of available trials and this is what Pennington and Hasty 1988 did. So part of the background for this study is you need to know what primacy and recency effects are. I've already done videos on these and the links will be in the description and on the article on psychyogi.org. Aim. To investigate whether or not story evidence summaries are true causes of the final verdict decisions and the extent to which story order affects confidence in those decisions. So story order is simply telling the story in chronological order, in the order it actually happened. Whereas witness order may be recalling it in the order that the witness remembers it. It may not necessarily be chronological. Method and design. It was a laboratory experiment, the second of two, and the first one was in Pennington and Hasty 1986, if you want to look at that, although we don't need that for this um, experiment study. Participants, 130 college students from Northwestern University and Chicago University. Now these exper- these participants were paid for their participant participation in the hour-long experiment. They were allocated to one of four conditions in roughly equal numbers. Procedure. Participants listened to a tape recording of a stimulus trial. Commonwealth of Massachusetts versus Cadwell. This was a real trial and it was a real recording of the trial. Then they responded to written questions. The hour-long audio was of a real trial. The participants were told to reach either a guilty or a not guilty verdict against a murder charge on the defendant in the case. Once they had reached their verdict, they were asked to rate their confidence in their decision on a five-point scale. The participants reached their verdict independently and did not confer with any of the other participants. They were separated by a partition in the room. Now, this is an important point because... In real trials, the jury confers with each other. So this may be low in ecological validity because it doesn't apply to real life. In real juries, people don't independently make decisions. They have to make decisions as a group, a group of 12 in most countries. In the audio recording, 
there were 39 pieces of evidence that suggested that the defendant was guilty and 39 pieces of evidence that suggested that the defendant was innocent. This is, again, very important to the validity of the study. If you had 20 pieces of evidence that suggested that the defendant was guilty and 50 that suggested that they were innocent, then we would expect that most people would say, well, they're innocent because there is more evidence to suggest that. But when there's an equal number, we can say that the independent variable, in this case, the possible conditions, which we're going to go on to in a moment, have actually caused the change that we're witnessing in the results. The evidence was either presented in story order, that is chronological order of the actual events, or witness order, which, as we mentioned earlier, is the order in which the witnesses recall the information. And because of this, there were four possible conditions. The prosecution items in story order and the defence in witness order. Prosecution items in story order and the defence in story order. Prosecution items in witness order and the defence in story order. Prosecution items in witness order and the defence in witness order. Now that may be quite difficult to understand through audio, so it's probably best to look on Psych Yogi and it will you'll see it written down. You should write it down and then every time you listen to this, um, look at it and you'll understand it better. In all the cases, the stimulus trial began with the indictment and followed the normal trial procedure, ending with the judge's instructions. Of course, step nine was taken up by the real participants, so that's why it doesn't have the step nine in the audio recording. Finding. Percentage of participants choosing a verdict of guilty of murder by prosecution and defence audit conditions. So if the prosecution items were in story order and the defence was in witness order, it was 98% guilty. Prosecution items in story order and defence in story order was 59% guilty. Prosecution items in witness order and defence in story order was only 31% guilty. Prosecution items in witness order and the defence in witness order was 63%. These show that the story order persuaded more jurors of Cadwell's guilt in the prosecution case. So if the prosecution used story order, we can say that there will be more chance that there will be a guilty verdict given. There will be a greater chance of a guilty verdict given in story order when the prosecution uses it. If the defence presented its evidence in witness order, then even more juries would find a guilty verdict. And if the position were reverse and the defence had the benefit of the story order, the guilty rate drops to 31%. So if you're being prosecuted, you really want to hope that the prosecution displays things in witness order and the defence displays things in story order. Conclusions. As predicted, the greatest confidence in their verdicts was expressed by those who heard the defence or prosecution in story order. Least confidence was expressed by those who heard the two witness order conditions. Pennington and Hasty 1988 Evaluation This is not an exhaustive list of evaluations, but something to consider. And you can obviously add to more of this, and I would suggest you do that to further your understanding of the study. So, the use of quantitative data makes it easy to analyse and therefore establish cause and effect, although it does mean that any conclusions will have to be inferred from the experimenter. It can't be um, taken straight from the results. So, the reasons for the change may be slightly harder to establish using quantitative data. You may have to use a qualitative data to get a better understanding of that. The results are similar to the 80% guilty verdict rate of American courts in this condition, prosecution items in story order and the defence in witness order. 
as that was 78%, uh, which suggests that the results from the alternate orders may predict real court results from such orders. Now, that's a strength, and it's called predictive validity. Because we've noticed that there is a correlation between one of the conditions which is most similar to real life and the um, real life itself, obviously, we can suggest that maybe the other conditions, when used in real life, will actually be quite similar. So it predicts um, real life. Now, there's an argument for low ecological validity because the trial only lasted an hour and was only an audio recording. Furthermore, the participants reached their decision independently, which, as we mentioned earlier, is unlike juries in real trials. Therefore, we can argue that the results may not be generalizable to real life. Reliability. Now, this is a strength because both the large sample and the methodolo methodology makes this experiment highly reliable. It's a lab experiment and there's a large sample of 130. So, we can take the results and say, well, this probably will occur again. Now, there's a weakness demand characteristics. As the participants were paid for their participation, we can argue that some of the results may be due to the participants trying to act in a way desirable to the experimenters. This is actually against the BPS's ethical codes, because if you pay a participant, you can make them do far more than they would normally do. If you've heard of the Milgram experiment, the participants were paid $4.50 for their participation, and they went a lot further than it is suggested they would have if they weren't paid. And in fact, some um, replications of that experiment later, I believe, didn't have payment and they were lower. Ethics. We could argue due to the nature of the case that some of the participants may be negatively affected by the content of the case. Uh, it was a murder trial. Now, this is almost unavoidable in um, studying juries and the decision-making process and courts. Validity. There was, as there was an equal amount of guilty and non-guilty pieces of evidence, as we mentioned earlier, we can argue that the results were more valid because the independent variable is likely to have caused a change. Weakness. Determinism. Arguably, this case highlights the deterministic nature of the legal process. The results show that it doesn't matter how many pieces of evidence are for or against the guilty verdict, but more for the order in which the information was presented. Now, this is a problem, because if this really is the case, then it doesn't matter if someone's guilty or not guilty, it just matters in, which, in the order in which the information is presented to the jury. So that can't be fair, and it can't be a due legal process. If you've enjoyed this Psych Kyogi presentation, why not subscribe to keep up with all the latest videos?